Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is, is Dr. Ted Korkovalos. I'm an associate professor in the physics department at Duquesne University. And this is our information session on the professional master's degree in applied physics program. Uh, <clears throat> so today briefly just wanna introduce you to Duquesne University and our department. Uh, tell you what the professional master's degree is and uh, how uh, we uh, interpret that here at Duquesne, and also give you some information on the application process and how to apply. Uh, just introduce myself first. Uh, I've been at Duquesne since 2013. I did my PhD work in experimental condensed matter physics, uh, mostly doing superconductor stuff uh, at Caltech. Um, my current research is in experimental atomic, molecular, and optical physics, uh, with also some applications to chemistry and environmental science. Uh, on the teaching side, I primarily teach classes in optics, quantum mechanics, and electrodynamics. Uh, Duquesne is uh, here in the northeastern part of the United States in Pennsylvania. Uh, Pittsburgh, the city, is here on the western end of the state. And the university itself is right next to downtown. Uh, the university was founded in 1878. It's a Catholic university run by the Spiritan Congregation. Uh, we currently have about 9,000 students studying 223 academic programs across our nine colleges and schools. The campus itself is about 48 acres. And you can see on the, the image here, it's right next to downtown Pittsburgh and overlooking the Monongahela River here. Uh, Pittsburgh is a great place to come. Um, you know, one of the reasons that we got into this program is because of the needs of these employers you see here. Uh, we, we felt that there was a need for people with the unique skills we could provide. And so just locally, we have companies uh, that you probably recognize, everything from Google, uh, PPG, uh, Alcoa, Westco, formerly Westinghouse. Uh, two six is a, a semiconductor and, and an optics manufacturer. And there's a few other listed here through all kinds of software, robotics, electronics, biotech. Um, and it was rated by LinkedIn and truly as one of the top markets for recent graduates. And one of the portions of our program is uh, every student will do an internship at perhaps one of these companies or others uh, here in the area. Pittsburgh is also a great place to live. It's a major academic center. There's three major universities here, Duquesne, the University of Pittsburgh, and Carnegie Mellon University, and several, several smaller universities. So there's lots of uh, young people around doing uh, lots of exciting things. It's a vibrant cultural center. Uh, there's a lot of great food here, uh, music. You can see the photo of the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, which is regularly winning Grammy Awards for their recordings. Uh, art and theater in the cultural center downtown. Uh, we have major sports teams. You can see in the background the, uh, the baseball stadium there. Um, it's also a good location to get around as a student. Uh, we have good public transit. There's buses and light rail that run right by the campus uh, all over the city and into the, the suburbs. The city is also located near a lot of great outdoors locations. If you like camping and hiking, there's things like Ohio Pile State Park. Uh, the Appalachian Trail is, is about an hour uh, south of here, and it's well connected. International Airport um, with flights uh, um, you know, all over the United States and also Europe and Canada, and also train service to, to major cities like Chicago, Washington, Philadelphia, New York. Uh, here are the physics faculty. We're a small department. There are eight of us here, you can see, uh, listed alphabetically uh, with a variety of uh, of backgrounds and uh, uh, interests. Uh, so primarily in the graduate program, you'll, you'll see myself, um, Dr. Sharescu, I'll talk a little bit about her work later. Um, Dr. Yang, who's teaches, or Dr. Wang, who's teaching our um, computational uh, physics course. And Dr. Min Bakhtar, whose specialty is in environmental nuclear and particle physics. So what is a professional master's degree? This is, um, Maybe not, not a very common degree. Uh, it's an advanced degree, obviously, uh, but it has both technical and business components. And I'll talk more about the curriculum here in a little bit. And we built this program based on interviews from our alumni who work in industry and employers here in the area to figure out what skills you need, not so much uh, maybe what particular courses, but what you need to do in those courses to get the skills that you will use on the job. 
here's one of our alumni here on, on the right, Sean. He, um, he graduated with his bachelor's from Duquesne back in 2010, and now he works as an optical scientist at a defense contractor. And he, he talks about his Duquesne physics degree helped him in so many ways. Uh, it's not enough to excel only at a few skills. Employers are looking for true polymath. Uh, Sean is one of the alumni we interviewed when we were building this program. And he thinks that or we have an ambitious, unique approach to build the kind of broad skill set needed in today's jobs. And this is really our goal. And that we also believe this is a great value for you. Um, it's a two-year program. You'll get a graduate degree and the skills are specific to what you will need uh, when you get to the job. Uh, just uh, throughout the country, this is not Duquesne data, this is throughout the United States, but uh, physics master's graduates get well-paying jobs. Uh, you can see on the left here, uh, some of uh, the, the various fields that people go into. Um, you obviously, uh, the largest group here is physics or astronomy, uh, but almost an equal number go into engineering, a uh, fair number in, in computer science education, et cetera. And you can see a starting salary in the United States uh, for someone with a physics master's degree. You can see the range here. So you know, the, uh, the mean value is about $70,000 per year, um, you know, up into the six figures here. And not only are they well-paying jobs, uh, people report that they like the jobs they have with their physics master's degree. Uh, so this graph here shows uh, you know, satisfaction survey on various aspects of their jobs, and everything from job security uh, to benefits uh, to their overall satisfaction. So you can see that you know, well more than three quarters of uh, physics master's holders say that they are satisfied uh, or very satisfied with their job. So you may have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, how is this program, this professional master's program, different from a traditional or what we refer to as an academic physics master's degree? The key is in the nature of the courses. So here we're going to emphasize skills and tools used in a modern industrial or government research type facility rather than a university lab. And this is based on the skills that the employers themselves tell us that they need. Uh, so that includes uh, how to use various types of equipment, uh, various types of software that you see in, in, in a, um, a commercial laboratory. In the university lab, we often do things differently. Uh, for example, in my own research, I build a lot of my own equipment. But when you're working for an employer, uh, you know, they want you to know how to use the things they can, they can buy commercially. And so we're going to focus on that. Uh, we also have uh, several business courses that you'll be taking. And the idea here is to prepare you to go directly into management roles or to start your own companies. So business skills are not something you commonly see with, with physics majors at the bachelor's level. And so we wanna broaden everyone's horizons and give them more opportunities once they get uh, to the workforce. Now, how does this differ from like an engineering master's degree? Well, uh, there, there's some overlap in the topics, but our point of view is a little bit different. Uh, we are a, a physics degree. We, we believe in basic research is the way to go. And so we teach from a ground up perspective. Uh, the solutions to problems come from uh, basic principles. Uh, you know, if you can go back to Newton's law, F equals MA, you can get a lot of good stuff done. So we use those basic ideas and then we use modern, modern tools like hardware and modern software. And understanding the tools is just as important as knowing how to use them. That's our point of view and that's how our program differentiates itself from an engineering type background. Uh, so basically, if, if needed, our graduates can build something from the ground up um, using basic uh, science knowledge. So here's more formal language about the learning goals of our program. Uh, we've you know, identified four uh, categories of goals. Uh, we like our students to demonstrate content knowledge in areas of applied physics that are relevant to the current scientific and technological enterprises. We like our students to demonstrate knowledge and skills for the measurement and control of physical variables, as well as transduction of changes in these variables through physical phenomenon. In other words, uh, build devices to, to measure and control things. Uh, the third bullet point here is to demonstrate knowledge uh, using computer models and simulations of physical phenomenon processes. And also kind of the flip side of that, not only simulate, but also uh, take the data from real world experiments, analyze it. 
And lastly, acquire advanced skills related to scientific, technical, and professional communication. These are skills that uh, we don't often emphasize in, in STEM courses, but going into the workforce, these are absolutely crucial. And so our students will be presenting their work in a variety of formats, seminars, uh, formal project proposals, uh, and instruction documents, um, and they'll also design and deliver oral and written presentations using scientific and professional formats such as technical seminars, project proposals, um, et cetera, using advanced uh, technology and communication modes. We have a, a handful of core technical competency goals. We want our students to be well-grounded on a theoretical basis. Uh, so uh, that means things like quantum mechanics, electrodynamics, optics, mathematical methods, computational methods, uh, condensed matter uh, materials, et cetera. And our students will learn a variety of software tools, uh, including Python, MATLAB, Maple, Multisam, Sim, ZMAX, which is an optical simulation software, LabVIEW, which is a, a command and control uh, software set, and CAD, computer uh, automated design. Uh, some of our focus things are on optics, uh, and particularly in the optics course that, that I'll be teaching, we'll be talking about imaging, interferometry, fiber optics, nonlinear optics, lasers, spectroscopy, uh, and, and several other things here. Um, there's, also, there's also an instrumentation course, which is focused on building electronic devices to talk to instruments and control instruments. Uh, so that consists of analog and digital circuits, uh, microprocessors, um, tools like spectrum analyzers, network analyzers, digital synthesizers, uh, FPGA programmable uh, chips, high-speed acquisition and control, uh, designing your own printed circuit boards, and then a handful of other hardware um, that we'll need uh, throughout the courses, things like 3D printing, how to use the, uh, the machine shop, the mill, and the lathe, etc. cetera, uh, MOSFET spectroscopy for uh, characterizing materials, ball milling for manual manufacturing uh, nanomaterials. So this is just a, a sampling of the different things that we've folded into all of our coursework here. So here's the curriculum itself. Uh, it's a two-year program spanning 36 credits. Uh, a, credit hour, a credit is roughly uh, one hour of instruction per week. Um, so there's uh, a couple of foundational courses every semester. Um, students will be enrolled in a professional seminar. So this is where we bring in outside speakers um, from industry and universities to discuss their work and their research. Uh, there's two science communications courses, which are fo focused on formal communications, like writing research proposals, uh, giving uh, formal reports, things like that. Uh, next are uh, 15 credits of what we call technical core. These are you know, your physics classes, if you will. So these are things, uh, you know, some of the courses are advanced optical theory and devices. That's one I'll be teaching. Uh, data acquisition and control, computational physics, where you build, uh, write computer code to, to model physical systems. Uh, and then some additionally technical electives. So for example, you, uh, material science course or quantum optics course, in addition to you know, anything else that may, we may offer as time goes by. Um, then we get to the, the business core. So these are um, three courses that we worked carefully with the uh, Palumbo School of Business here at Duquesne University to pick the courses that best match what we're trying to do. And they identified these three courses, um, which are part of their award-winning uh, online course series in ethics and stakeholder management, entrepreneurial management, and uh, behavior and organizations. And then finally, the last semester uh, of the program, uh, students will do a capstone project, um, and this will involve solving a real world problem in collaboration with an industry partner, um, or perhaps an optional thesis if you, if you prefer to do kind of a more traditional uh, uh, conclusion to your master's program. Uh, this is our 36 credits of coursework. In addition, um, every student is required to do a summer internship with an industrial partner. And we will work with you to find uh, those locations. And uh, we've, we're already getting some uh, employers lined up uh, so that it, uh, to help you guys get that uh, crucial step there. Uh, so a little, little more detail how this sequencing would go. Uh, so this is the, again, it's a two year or four semester program. Um, this is, uh, for example, students who uh, start this fall 
would take the professional seminar and science communication class, uh, the advanced optical theory and devices course. That's the one I'm teaching. Uh, material science course will be taught by uh, Dr. Monica Sharescu. In the spring of your first year, again, the professional seminar and science communication courses. Additionally, computational physics course uh, that'll be taught by Dr. Yang Wang, who uh, works at the uh, Pittsburgh Superconducting or Supercomputing Center, and then ethics and stakeholder management in the School of Business. So following that semester, uh, students will do a 12 work internship with an industrial partner, either you know, here in Pittsburgh or, or anywhere really, as long as we can get uh, the schedules worked out. And there you'll be working on the job site, learning hands-on skills, and uh, hopefully building up some ideas that, for things that may become your capstone project at the end of your second year. After you return from your internship, uh, the second year, uh, again, this is some example of the courses, a professional seminar, quantum optics course, uh, which will be taught by me. Um, data acquisition and control will be taught by uh, Dr. Fatia bin Mokhtar, uh, who's a, she's a particle physicist, so they do all this uh, you know, really huge uh, data sets and high speed electronics. Uh, it's pretty amazing to me, actually. Uh, and then the entrepreneurial management course within the School of Business. And then the final semester, we'll take the, uh, again, the seminar is every semester. And then the professional behavior and organizations is kind of the, um, the culmination of the business sequence. And that's one of their favorite courses. They're always talking about this one. So I think our students are going to enjoy that. Uh, and then, you know, the majority of your time will be spent on your capstone project. Uh, so this is our sequence. So after two years, um, you'll finish with your master's, a professional master's in applied physics. Uh, just to give you a flavor of what the courses might be, this is the course I'm teaching in the fall. <clears throat> and so uh, it's called Advanced Optical Theory and Devices. So this is an optics course. And the particular flavor is we're going to look at optics as used in research and development settings. So we're going to look both at theory or theoretical background for things like um, we will start with geometric optics and then work our way up to Fourier optics and, and eventually quantum optics and practical application. Uh, this course is a hybrid course. There's two hours per week of lecture and three hours per week of lab. And so we'll talk about things in the classroom and then we'll go to the lab and, and build them. Uh, things like interferometers, um, single photon detection systems, uh, perhaps some quantum entanglement stuff if we have time. Uh, and you'll be using hand-on state-of-the-art software and hardware. Uh, software like ZMAX, uh, CAD programs, MATLAB, LabVIEW, Python, all these things to both design systems and then control and readout equipment in the lab. And then we'll use some hardware like uh, optical fibers, acousto-optic modulators, uh, diffractive optics, nonlinear optics, uh, interferometers, um, uh, you know, cameras and imaging systems, all kinds of fun stuff. And like I said, this is a combination of lecture and lab. Uh, we'll be uh, talking about the theory, we'll be doing simulations on the computer, and we'll be building stuff. And so I'm pretty excited to get this going in the fall. Our facilities in the Department of Physics, we have teaching laboratories for electronics, optics, modern physics, computational physics. Uh, we have modern uh, oscilloscopes, optics, test equipment like uh, spectrum analyzers, network analyzers, um, you know, uh, uh, digital testing equipment. We have uh, lab setups in the optics lab for things like single photon measurements and, and coincident detection, in addition to uh, several kinds of lasers, uh, spectroscopy systems, et cetera. Uh, we have a uh, pulse nu nuclear magnetic resonance machine. And uh, we have research laboratories for atomic physics, optics, uh, that's my area of expertise, and, and nanomaterials. And then we have research offsite uh, in high energy physics and particle physics. Uh, here's just a, a brief overview of some of the research labs. This is my lab. Uh, my specialty is atomic physics and optical physics. Uh, got a variety of things going on, uh, some ultra-cold atom experiments where we laser cool atoms down to uh, uh, micro-Kelvin temperatures or below. And we're, we're studying analogs of 2D topological systems. So we build things like quasi-crystals. Quasi that's the image you can see in the background here is, uh, is a quasi-crystal that we made in our lab. Uh, we do mid-infrared spectroscopy for uh, chemical physics uh, experiments in collaboration with our chemistry department. Uh, we've been looking at uranium oxide compounds. Um, 
And then we do some fluorescence and colorimetric uh, detection of contaminants in drinking water. And the main focus here is we, we build inexpensive instruments to take out in the field and measure things like uh, fluoride, lead, arsenic, et cetera, in drinking water. The Material Science Research Lab is run by Dr. Monica Sharescu. Um, she specializes in nanomaterials. Uh, so they synthesize and characterize things like metallic glasses, mixed oxide nanoparticles, particularly uh, magnetic materials, uh, graphene ferrite nanocomposites. And they have a variety of, of instruments in the lab to manufacture these nanoparticles and characterize them. Um, they, uh, they make the materials using things like ball milling, um, hydrothermal synthesis, laser ablation, and then they characterize with things like MOS power spectroscopy, uh, magnetic measurements like susceptibility and, and uh, you know, DC field measurements, uh, thermal analysis, um, calorimetry, those kinds of things. The other major research group at our at Duquesne here is uh, Dr. Fatia Bin Mokhtar, who does particle physics, nuclear physics research. Um, so she's studying the, the structure of the atomic nucleus. You can see in the, the picture on the right here. Um, you know, one of the projects, for example, was, you know, studying the nature of what is actually inside a proton. Um, so those are the types of experiments she works on. Those are done remotely. Most of her work is done at Thomas and Jefferson Lab in uh, Newport News, Virginia. So uh, her students uh, do uh, software and data analysis here at Duquesne. And then uh, during the summers, they'll go to JLab to actually uh, work on the hardware and, and build stuff. Uh, so that's a brief overview of the, our department and our program. If, uh, if you'd like to apply to our program, uh, here's a list of the requirements. Um, bachelor's degree in physics, engineering, or related field with a GPA of, of 2.8 or above on a, a 4.0 scale. Uh, other measures that are acceptable, uh, we may ask you to take some additional background courses uh, in fundamental physics things if you know, we, we feel like you need that to keep up. Uh, a resume or CV and a personal statement. Official undergraduate transcripts uh, with an English translation if necessary. Two letters of recommendation. Uh, we do ask for the GRE exam, the GRE general exam, not the physics subject exam. And for international students, we ask that you uh, take the TOEFL, TOEFL test of English proficiency, or there's some alternative uh, alternatives to that you can see at the uh, application website. Um, and so with that, I just ask you to apply today. Uh, here's the email address, or excuse me, the web address uh, for the application. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and if you need any more information about the application process or about the program, you can, you can contact myself, um, uh, Heather here, who is the graduate advisor, or uh, Dr. Simonetta Fratelli, who's the chair of our department. And our email addresses are here. With that, I thank you and we hope to see you in the fall and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, well, if there's no questions, um, you know, be sure to check out our website. Uh, you can also find uh, links to all the faculty members. You can find a link to my, my research website if you're interested in that. Um, oh, I think uh, Terry had a question. I saw you raising your hand there. Yeah, I had a, a question for you, Ted. Hi, good to meet you. Thank nice you for the presentation. You. What, what, um, what characteristic of a student makes them successful at the master's level? What would you, what would you say the difference is between a, you know, an undergrad, a successful undergrad and a successful master's student? Well, I think the, the difference is, uh, you know, I don't think it's so much a difference in the student, but the type of coursework, uh, you're able to much more focus on these courses uh, in the master's program. Uh, for one thing, there's just numerically, there's fewer courses, so you can devote more time to each one. And also, you know, once students uh, get to a master's program, they're a little bit more mature and they have a better idea of what they want to do with themselves. Uh, and so uh, things go a lot more smoothly in that case. So I didn't quite answer your your uh, your question, but I, I'm just you know telling you what I've observed over the years. Thank you. So um, I have a question. 
Uh, sure, Ben. Um, I took no physics in my undergrad. I was a math. Okay. Bachelor. Um, I would, um, I guess my question is, um, would I be able to catch up in time? Like, yeah. So I, you know, in your case, and we, we'd have to talk, you know, to see you know, specifically what your background is, but in general, you know, we probably ask you to take, uh, you know, a course in, uh, say, optics and electro uh, dynamics and, and maybe quantum mechanics, uh, just to get you up to speed. The good thing is coming from a math background, uh, I think those classes will be easy for you. Um, but just to make sure you know everything before we get into the more advanced classwork, we probably would ask you to take those additional courses. Okay. Um, and if I were to take them, say, over the summer at a community college, would that be acceptable? Uh, we'd have to talk and, and see what the details are. Um, okay. You know, so yeah, we you can keep in touch and, and we'll, uh, we'll let you know uh, what works and, and what else you can do, sure. Well, if I could add something, if I yeah, may. Sure. Ted, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, for whatever it's worth, uh, actually, I've already graduated grad school. I'm just interested in the program, but <laughs> I actually did my graduate work in, in Pittsburgh, okay. and it is a wonderful place for a student. Uh, you know, it's uh, the whole city there is kind of built for students, it seems. Um, so I don't, I don't know who the audience here is today, but if you've <laughs> never, if you've never been to Pittsburgh, believe me, it, it's, uh, it's a wonderful place to be a student. Well, it's a level, lovely place to be a faculty member too, because I, I feel like a student a lot of the time. So, uh, so thank you for that. How many, how, how long is the, how long has the program been in existence? I, I missed the first minute and a half, so excuse me, but. So this is a brand new program. Brand new. Okay. Yeah, the, our first uh, incoming class will start in the fall. So. Great. I think I interrupted someone. Yeah, I was going to ask for which are the deadlines or. So the application deadline is, is July 1st. Okay. And uh, you know we, we evaluate applications on a rolling basis, which means you know as soon as you submit, we'll take a look, and you you should get a response fairly quickly. Uh, but the deadline is July first. Okay, thank you. How, how many students do you expect? I, I assume some of the courses you you give to you uh, offer to students not in the this program itself. How, how what's right. the size of the students and number of students in each course, roughly? Well, for is, this program, our, our, uh, our goal is six to 10 students. So there'll be small classes. Um, those are typical sizes for our upper division undergraduate courses as well. Um, and so that's a, you know, a lot of good opportunity to, to work one-on-one -on -one with the instructors. And that's one of the things that, that we've, uh, we're really proud of here at Duquesne is we're able to do that. I assume the business classes are probably over at the B school and a little bit yeah. larger. Yeah, those are but larger yeah. courses. Uh, yeah. The particular courses we've chosen are all available online. Um, so some students, uh, some students expressed uh, that they would like that flexibility. So that's why we, we chose those particular courses. Um, uh, but those courses are, are well received and uh, you know, the business professors are excited to be working with us. The 502 course, your course is strictly yeah. uh, in person? That's right. Yeah, we'll be right. in person in the fall. Uh, yeah, I know all of us have been, uh, you know, tested, let's say, with the, uh, all the uh, pandemic stuff, but Duquesne will be fully in person in the fall. So. Okay, if there are no other questions, I'll, I'll end it here. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, if you have any additional questions, let me just put my, uh, uh, here's my email address, uh, or you can contact Heather or uh, Dr. Fratelli. Uh, any of us would be happy to talk with you. 
Uh, and uh, you know, hopefully we get to see all of you in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh.